My name is David Lewis. I want to borrow from Albert Einstein's quote to demonstrate to you what this program is all about. Quote, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. In December of 2012, my grandson Jesse was shot and killed in his first grade classroom in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. A town so small the idea of this happening would have entered no one's mind. An angry former student brought in an assault weapon and killed 26 souls in a matter of minutes. The world was in shock. How could this happen? And the only response we could think of was getting rid of assault weapons. Not that that's a bad idea, but the real problem is in the hearts and minds of our kids. So for a cure, we have to go back to the cause. My daughter, Jessie's mom, Scarlett, felt with some effort and study she could find a solution and was amazed there really already was one out there called social and emotional learning. This concept's been around for 50 plus years, studied extensively with very positive results. We can help our kids grow up and get beyond trauma and stress and anger she worked with scores of professional educators and put together a curriculum that not only teaches the basics of social and emotional learning, it teaches kids to love and connect with one another. We will talk about this more, but it works. I've been in many classrooms from pre-K to high school, and kids get this. We teach them life is a choice, a basic choice between love and fear. Fear dominates our world, but kids quickly grasp that love feels better than hate or anger or fear. <clears throat> they really do get it far more than us older folks. The Choose Love curriculum is set up to be free, is available online, it's easy to teach and easy to learn. It can be taught in 30 minutes a week. Teachers get as much from this curriculum as do the kids. Does anyone really believe the Mexicans are the reason our kids take drugs? Does anyone believe childhood trauma is untreatable or that our prisons aren't filled with angry people who have felt separated from society, who've grown up in a world of fear with no one telling them there was a better choice? This is what Choose Love is about. It's simple, it's common sense, and it's free. There is no reason this is not taught in every school in the world. This is not the only high quality social and emotional program, but it also teaching age old wisdom of the human race, do unto others. If we want to fix this, I do not see another path that works. We spend billions and billions on the symptoms of this illness of separation between each other and fear. You can ask a second grader what feels better, anger or love, and they intuitively know the answer. Every part of this curriculum has been the object of much research on results of SEL over time and on the neurosciences of teaching the lessons on love. When the first idea of gratitude, forgiveness, and compassion was expressed to us, of course we had no fancy brainwave machines or methods to test the validity of these ideas. We do now, and they do in fact, change the brain. They do work. If we could deliver this curriculum in a pill form, all of us would be taking it. The idea of choosing love has been around for a long time. As Aristotle said, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. This short clip was done at a Catholic school in Norwalk, Connecticut. It really gives you an example of what the program's about. Today we're going to talk about Choose Love and we're going to talk about the last component. But first I want to review all the other components. Before I started learning Choose Love, I didn't really pay attention to those feelings. And I want you to think about either how that character showed compassion what does it mean to have courage? I think um, that courage has changed for me because instead of the knight in shining armor, I think that 
courage is more about helping other people, not just for yourself. Now that I know how to be courageous, I go up and speak in front of my class with no like issues because I used to have a lot of trouble speaking up. Choose Love has definitely made it easier to go to school. At the beginning of the year, the anxiety level was definitely for me at a 10. After Choose Love, I feel like for me, the anxiety level was like a lot lower and probably more like at a three. Raise your hand if Choose Love is your favorite subject. Whose grades got better because Choose Love I do use Choose Love at home because I feel like the hardest thing to do is to be like civil with your like siblings. The message that my daughter gave to me about um, compassion, forgiveness, love, and how people belong just made me a better police officer, a better parent. Ever since I've learned Choose Love, like sometimes have fights at home and then we just forgive each other and just move on. From bullying to drug abuse to suicide, I mean all of these ter truly terrifying uh, problems that we are anticipating as yes. parents, uh, all of that I believe could be just proactively mellowed out, disappeared. Calm down. <laughs> Calm Go down away. as a result out the door. of the, yeah, yeah. I think it definitely helps me feel safer in school. Show me the forgiveness tree. Like leaves on your son don't have uh, words on it. Can you point to your forgiving fingers? There's a heart in the middle. Uh, yeah. And here's our forgiving fingers. I truly believe in my heart and as a police officer, okay, if these other schools um, and the other students open their hearts and mind to what Scar the message Scarlet sent in. One, two, three, four, five. Until my anger dies. Until my anger dies. That person had a program that's, that Scarlet has set up for these kids right now. That day never would have happened. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I'm still mad, I'll um, count again. again. I feel safer because I don't think these people that I've learned to love with would ever do something like that. Doing all these great things like gratitude, it's it's mind blowing. Need to be taught and can be learned even by the elderly. Yes. <laughs> I think I'll remember it forever. Choose Love is really amazing. Governor Sununu of the state of New Hampshire recently instituted the Choose Love curriculum for the entire state of New Hampshire as part of the New Hampshire School Safety Program. After Scarlett had shown him this program, he looked at her and he said, why wouldn't I do this? Victor Frankel, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning after World War II, was a psychiatrist and put in prison by the Germans in a concentration camp during World War II. He studied the men in the camp and which ones survived and which ones struggled and oftentimes did not. His formulas tells us between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space, we can choose our response. And in that response lies our freedom. This concept is very similar to the idea of you can always respond in love. Some of the issues we face uh, go without saying, but violence in schools is increasing and type and severity. 49.5% of our youth will have had a diagnosable mental illness by the time they're 18, mostly anxiety. That's from the Child Mind Institute. No wonder drug use is high. Trauma in schools has increased from one in five students 20 years ago to over 50% now. Reported bullying has increased even after we started reporting bullying. There are more suicides in the U.S. than murders. Substance abuse obviously is skyrocketing. Despite our 
best efforts. So who's going to fix this? It hasn't been the government. It hasn't been the war on drugs. It hasn't been what we've been doing. We need to do something different. Who's going to fix it? We're going to fix it. We're the only ones that can fix our own problems. This is a solution. This is a method that will fix those problems. Blame is part of the problem, which we see every night on TV. We say to people, you make me mad. What does that mean? It takes us out of the loop of being responsible for our own reaction. It's a big deal. It's changing the way we perceive things. Social and emotional learning is the number one way to have a safe school environment. Countless studies over the decades have shown this to be the case. SEL is the number one most proactive and preventative mental health initiative we have. After Sandy Hook, the state of Connecticut did an extensive two-year study on why did this happen? How could, how could it happen? How do we keep from happening again? One of the three things they came up with was Social and emotional learning must form an integral part of the curriculum from preschool through high school. It can help children identify and name feelings such as frustration, anger, and loneliness that potentially contribute to disruptive and self-destructive behavior. So what is this thing we're calling social and emotional learning? As defined by CASEL, which is the Collaborative for Social and Emotional Learning, we're teaching kids social awareness, self-management, self-awareness, responsible decision-making, and relationship skills. Daniel Goldman wrote the book, The Bible on Emotional Intelligence, first written in 1995. It's filled with facts and research about social-emotional learning, and I guarantee you, you cannot read that book without a thorough understanding of why every single child should be taught social and emotional learning. His research goes back into the 40s. It's not an easy read, but if you're interested in social and emotional learning, it's filled with facts. The scientifically researched outcomes of social and emotional learning. Children that have access to SEL experience 11% improvement in academic performance. 22% improvement in social and emotional skills, 10% increase in higher education graduation rates, a 10% decrease in emotional distress, better classroom and school climate, increased positive relationships and connection, less stress and anxiety, less behavioral issues, and less bullying. There was a study done in late 2015 about the economic and public health implications of teaching social and emotional learning. For every $1 invested, there's an $11 net present value return to the community. Investing in social and emotional learning is basically a windfall for the government. And of course, the government is you and I. Almost all major companies are aware of the importance of emotional intelligence to an employee's eventual success. Google, who you would think would be IQ, values EQ, or emotional intelligence, over IQ. SEL can break the cycle of generational dysfunction as well. I'm not going to read this letter, but it's a, it's a note from Suzanne Knowles from the Arkansas Department of Education, uh, head of counseling. It's a wonderfully positive note about the Choose Love program and the fact that she has uh, helped us spread this program in Arkansas. This note's from Todd Shields, who runs the Fulbright College at the University of Arkansas. He's saying one of his main problems is that he gets students who have the IQ, but not the emotional intelligence to get through four years of school. And he seriously believes starting social-emotional learning in the earliest possible grade would make a major impact on that. Again, you can have these letters and read them if you want to or stop this uh, video. The motivation to do this came from my grandson, who wrote this note on the blackboard sometime before he went to school and died. And my daughter saw it and felt it was a message for her 
for me and for all of us, nurturing, healing, love means compassion across all languages. In addition to the points of social and emotional learning, we teach a formula for choosing love, which consists of courage, gratitude, forgiveness, and compassion in action. Each one of these components has been studied and actually changes the brain if you practice them. You've probably heard of gratitude. Practicing gratitude makes a huge difference in your life, as does forgiveness, as does compassion, as does courage. So where did this curriculum come from and who created it? It was created by many different educators at many different levels who had taught social emotional learning and these principles in their classrooms and had incredible success doing it. They, for the most part, volunteered to help us create this. I've been in classrooms uh, and have been absolutely blown away at the results of this teaching this, particularly in a class in Waterbury, Connecticut, of uh, senior high school students who stood out far and above, above the entire rest of the school because they've been taught to choose love. The results we've had from our surveys have basically been off the chart. 100% of the teachers said they'd seen an overall improvement in classroom climate. 90% said their students got along better. 95% rated the program good, very good, or excellent. 95% they would use the program again. For social and emotional programs, that's off the chart. There's also a Choose Love at Home program, which is a series of videos that help explain to parents what their students are learning and some of the terminology in the classes so that they can communicate at home about what they're learning about Choose Love. Last summer, Scarlett attended the school counselors convention in Hot Springs. And an FBI director of drug enforcement stood up and basically explained to the class how bad drug use had become. But then he said something that was startling. He said, basically, he said, basically, the opposite of addiction is connection, and connection is love. And if you ask most people who've used drugs, they'll tell you that. I use connection and love interchangeably and separation and fear interchangeably. That helps maybe because sometimes love has connotations that, uh, that we, don't, we can't quite grasp. What we do know is all human beings need connection or love. They want to belong as opposed to fitting in. We need to learn resilience to overcome obstacles. We want to feel good. That's what this program is about. Like Viktor Frankl explained earlier, life is a choice. And we can always choose love, no matter what happens to us. Over the last 20 or 30 years, there have been amazing discoveries in neuroscience about how we respond in our brain to certain stimuli, how our thoughts actually affect us on the cellular level. We teach this to young kids, and believe it or not, they get it. Here's a simple diagram showing you how feelings affects thoughts that then affect behavior then then can affect feelings again and thought. It's the cognitive triangle. I wish somebody had told me that when I was a kid. We're going to talk briefly about the benefits of the Choose Love formula, the benefits of courage. Courage equals confidence, creates a sense of leadership. All this is studied in numerous studies across the nation. So you can stop this and look at it, but every part of this formula has been studied uh, by many, many people. How about forgiveness? Healthier relationships, less anger, greater physical and psychological well-being, less anxiety, stress, and hostility. Actually extend your lifespan. How about gratitude? The benefits of gratitude, emotional, social, career, health, personality, all leading into greater happiness. The practice of gratitude. How about the benefits of practicing compassion in action? It makes us feel happy. Creates positive neurochemicals. 
Giving is good for our general health and well-being. It evokes gratitude. Adds years of life. Wow. In daily life, we must see that it's not happiness that makes us grateful, but gratefulness that makes us happy. It's the latest report from the Aspen Institute. A growing movement dedicated to the social, emotional, and academic well-being of children is reshaping learning and changing lives across America. On the strength of its remarkable consensus, a nation at risk is finally a nation of hope. Find out more and get involved. Check the Aspen Institute out for the uh, report if you'd like it. These lessons will travel through life with them. We do not have to live as victims of the world and really simply are unaware why we feel this way sometimes. If I am angry, I am responsible for it. And the only person that hurts is me. Feelings are all okay, but when they turn to thoughts and then to behavior that hurts, we've lost our way. I mean, self-destruction is unnecessary. I have a friend on death row in Arkansas, and he has said many times, if I was taught these things as a young man, I would not be here. Every one of us has been a victim one time or another, but for the most part, not really realizing how we were hurting ourselves. This curriculum is about teaching kids not to give away their personal power through anger and rage and self-destructive behavior. If we teach kids early enough, we can heal trauma, give them a far, far better odds of living a happy and productive life. As Albert Einstein said, to change, we must change the way we think. The dream is about a world of emotionally intelligent people who understand their connection, not their separation, who go through life understanding they hold the power over their well-being that life is an inside-out deal and their personal mental health does not depend on external events. When we turn on the TV at night, we won't hear people blaming others or demonizing others. We will completely understand we are in this together, and what I do to another is what I do to myself. The gross domestic product will be way up as the friction of mental distress will be vastly reduced and we will work far more efficiently. Can you think of any other policy or change that could lead to those kind of results and for very little money? Thank you. Can you imagine the difference in kids who go through this program from pre-K every year through senior high school?